chapter 12, and we're going to begin reading in verse 43. Matthew chapter 12, beginning in verse 43. The Bible says, When the unclean spirit is gone out of a man, he walketh through dry places, seeking rest, and findeth none. Then he saith, I will return unto my house from whence I came out, and when he is come, he findeth it empty, swept, and garnished. Then goeth he, and taketh with himself seven other spirits more wicked than himself, and they entereth in, and dwell there, and the last, the last state of that man is worse than the first. Even so shall it be also unto this wicked generation. I've got to preach this morning, the Lord be my helper on the thought, clean but empty. Dear Lord, we thank You for Your goodness. We thank You for the blessings that You send our church, Lord. We praise You for that. Lord, this morning we would pray that You would uh, allow us to preach what You've given us to preach. Lord, we pray that we would see uh, You in everything that happens. Lord, give us an understanding mind of Your Word this morning. Send the Holy Spirit this way that it might minister <coughs> unto Your people. Lord, that we might understand and know what we do well and where we need uh, improvement, Lord. We pray this morning that You would guide us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now, um, very familiar verses of Scripture, and we are going to review them just a bit, but what we're really going to be focusing on is quite different. Instead of the demon side of it, we'll be focusing on the empty side of it. Because uh, a lost person has the ability to be very, very empty, and a saved person can experience too if he or she is out of the will of God. That's why, uh, that's why He says, You draw nigh to me and I'll draw nigh to you. Uh, that's why He, uh, at times, you don't know whether you're saved or lost is because there's not a nearness unto the person of the Holy Ghost. And so when that estate happens, uh, we, we certainly need understanding and guidance. And we find here uh, that what what we experience and what the lost really experience all the time is a grave emptiness and a grave coldness. And so he begins, the Lord Jesus Christ speaking here, when the unclean spirit is gone out of a man. Now, let me say this. Even today, there are many, many unclean spirits all about us. This morning, if our spiritual eyes were to be open, like uh, like Esau's, I mean, excuse me, uh, like uh, uh, the servant's eyes was open, and we could see the spiritual matters around us, we would be uh, we would be amazed at what we saw. We we would be uh, we'd be consumed uh, with just the sight of the spiritual beings, both good and bad, that are about us. So. Just know the unclean spirits are out there and they're influencing every day in the things that you do. When the unclean spirit has gone out of a man. Now, I want you also to see that they have a they have a agent or a will of their own. They can come and go as they please. Remember how the unclean spirit attacked Saul? That's the same thing. So they can come and go. And so this unclean spirit completely left the individual. And what happened is that he got religious. Mm -hmm. That's right. You know, the problem today is that we don't understand being we don't understand the difference between being redeemed or saved and being religious. And, and, and what happened is the evil spirit left, so the individual becomes religious. He becomes uh, clean and swept and looking great, garnished, all gussied up, but having no true redemption. When the unclean spirit has gone out of the man, he, meaning the spirit, walketh through dry places seeking rest and findeth none. Now, I want you also to see the nature of an unclean spirit is this. It likes a place to dwell that is living. You know what? That ought to scare us to death. It, it ought to scare us to death for our children. It ought to scare us to death for our animals. 
You know, it, it sounds foolish, but you know what? Your dog can be demon possessed. Uh, people don't like to hear about that, but what did the ones that were cast out of the maniac of Gadara, where did they want to go? To the swine. And you reason, the reason why? They wanted something warm and living to dwell in. Right. You know, that, that, that's a pretty scary thought. And I, I've seen some things, and I've seen some people that I really probably uh, think that they were demon-possessed. So that's what demons or evil spirits enjoy. Verse 44. Then he, meaning the devil, then he saith, I will return into my house from whence I came out. Now, I want you to see how the demon views this individual is nothing more than a place to live. And we'll see by the help of the Lord this morning, when a demon leaves you, he could care less. <laughs> when he's exhausted his use of you, he'll leave and he'll leave you high and dry, and it will never occur to him again of what you are or who you are. It, does, uh, it really makes no difference to him at all. So this uh, demon says, I'll just go back to where I came from. Then he said, I will return into my house, that's all he considered, for which I came out, and when he is come, he findeth it empty. Now I want you to see the first qualification. And this is what many people experience and never even know it, is emptiness. Yeah. Now, a living creature will do something to fill the emptiness. Mm -hmm. Whether it be drinking, whether it be drugs, whether it be pornography, whatever it is, the living individual will do something to fill the void. You know, really, the, 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 and I've seen this, and really, I guess rock music really got its kick off in the 50s and became really bad in the 60s. And now that now we've lived with it here in this uh, in this nation for 50 years, the, the whole edifice behind that, the whole push behind it, is so you don't have to think about nothing. You know why you need to turn your TV off and just sit? You need to consider your spiritual estate. You know why you need to turn this off occasionally or put it on mute and put it in your pocket or leave it on the charger? It's because you need to sit and think about your spiritual estate. All that is is entertainment. And all it does is keep you thinking from thinking about eternity. And so we see then that this individual, that, that this person was feeling empty. So he goes in, the demon says it's empty, swept, and garnished. Now garnished means decorated. Uh, Sarah, my daughter-in-law, is very good at decorating. Uh, when they lived down under the hill, she made a very old house look nice. But you know what? It was still an old house. It didn't really change anything, did it? And we, we can, you know, be religious when we want to. We can wear the right clothes. We can do the right things. But that doesn't equate with being redeemed. We can learn the language. We can know what is said, but that doesn't make, your, make you safe. So despite garnished and looking religious, this individual was still empty and needful. Verse 45, Then goeth he, meaning the evil spirit, and taketh with himself seven other spirits more wicked than himself. Now, I want you to see that sin is always sequential and it always builds on another. I started smoking cigarettes when I was about 13 or somewhere in that neighborhood. I started drinking beer when I was about 15 or 16. I started smoking pot when I was about 17 or 18. And you know, it just one built on another. And people can say what they will, but sin will always lead to more sin. Yeah. It's just that way. And so, you see a very good illustration of it. They found it, He found it empty. And again, demons never want to be alone. So we've got seven others. Now, an individual went from one demon to being religious to having eight demons. All in a very short time. You know, uh, this is the sad truth though. But the nature of the human flesh... 
the individual would like those eight demons to be more than being empty. Being empty is a very desolate thing. Being empty is not something people enjoy. That's why they begin to fill themselves with the filth of this world is because they do not like being empty. Now, I want you to go with me, if you will, to the, the book of Acts, chapter 16. It's a fairly familiar verse of Scripture, but I, I want to make some notes here. Acts 16, uh, verse 15. Acts 15, um, I'm sorry, Acts 16, verse 15. Now, if you know your Bible, you know what's just happened was the conversion of Lydia. Lydia was religious. Lydia was a Jew among Jews. In fact, there's very good indication that she was a maker of the Jewish prayer cloth that the men would wear when they began to do their pray prayers and face Israel. And, and she was a wealthy woman, and she was a religious woman, but she wasn't saved. You know what? Again, even if you're religious and you're not saved, your house is still empty. Right. And so Lydia was one of those individuals, she, she loved the teachings of God, but she didn't love God. She loved the Word of God, but she didn't know the God of the Word. And you know what? I'm really fearful that's the situation we live in today, is a whole lot of people love the Word of God, but they don't know the God of the Word. Yeah. And so, uh, what we need to do as a people, make your calling and election sure. Be sure you know the Lord Jesus Christ like you think you do. So many is saying the church is rejoicing, and any time there's a conversion and a salvation, or even if the saved draw closer unto Christ, look out, trouble's on the way. Because listen, when there's a victory in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, listen, all hell gets mad at the very point of that event. Whenever, whenever someone's saved, when the saved are drawn up closer, and, and listen, I've never seen it, but if a real revival would break out, listen, every demon that was available would rush to New Testament Baptist Church to bring us down again. See, that, that, that's the nature of demons. That's the nature of devils. And so we find then that the devil was upset because Lydia was converted. Verse 15. And when she, meaning Lydia, and when she was baptized in her, whole, in her household, she besought us, saying, if, <laughs> if you judge me to be faithful to the Lord, come into my house and abide there, and she constrained, constrained us. Now, you think about your home, and would you, would you lend it to the availability of God's men? Now, nothing wrong with it necessarily. Every time that we have a preaching man come to us, we rely on the Dover Motel, do we not? But uh, would you lend your house for that? Would you say, come on in? You know, uh, the Shumanite woman even built on, didn't she? Right, right. She, she, she lended her house out, and to the point, <laughs> he stayed there so much, she thought, well, I'll just build a room on for it. <laughs> and she did it. And, and so then we as the Lord's people, we need, to, we need to change gears a little bit, and this wealthy woman not only asked him to stay, she says, if you really think I'm faithful, please stay. Show me I'm faithful. Let me do this for you. You talk about conversion of a religious woman, it made a huge difference. And so we find now the devil is angry. Verse 16. And it came to pass as we went to prayer. Now most people would miss that little word, we. Uh, because it's talking, Luke was on this mission trip with them. Luke is the writer of Acts. So he was there. He beheld all these events as they, as they were coming to pass. And they were still going down to prayer three times a day. Now, that, uh, there are a lot of reasons. I think they wanted to be an example to the Jews. And I think they wanted an opportunity to speak to the Jews concerning Christ. 
But they were still going down to the temple and praying. And a lot of people don't like to look at that because then they have to think about why. But I believe the why is that they wanted to influence others for Christ. And, and it came to pass as we, at least meaning Paul and Luke, as we went to prayer, a certain damsel possessed with a spirit of divination met us, which brought her masters much gain by soothsaying. Now, I want you to notice two things about it. Number one, uh, a, 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 a woman possessed with a spirit of divination. That means divining. That means understanding. That means looking about and being able to say, oh, this and this and this. You know, listen, half of them are charlatans, but people that tell the future, many of them have a spirit of divination. And just because they're right don't mean it's a God-given ability. So a spirit of divination exists. And you know what? When that is, it's mesmerizing. It will take your breath. I'll give you one little example and we'll move on. Many years ago when Mom lived in Nashville, she went to a carnival and you know, one of these crystal ball people was there and she just did it for fun. And... So she put her palm out and that old witch looked at it and said, you're, met, you're, you're in a, a relationship with a man named Jimmy's. And Mom kind of chuckled. And she says, you won't marry this James, but there will be another. And you know what? It was. She married a different James. And you, you know what? You have to say she must have had a spirit of detonation. And we don't like it. Makes us makes us real uncomfortable to think about that. But you know what? You, you know what? We as God's people, we need to be armed and ready. And if we don't, if we don't realize hey, those things are real, how can we possibly be prepared to to influence others about them and to teach others about them? And so we find here that this this woman, she had a very real spirit about her. She had real ability when it came to those things. I want you to see also it says she was possessed. Possessed with a spirit, a devil, a demon, whatever you want to call it. It's all the same. Which brought her masters much gain by soothsaying. And I'll say one more thing about that. She was possessed of the devil and she was owned by someone else. Listen, this morning if you're lost and you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ, you're owned by someone else. You're a slave. You're bound hand and foot uh, to the devil, to the people of this world. And so we find that she's in this state. Verse 17, The same followed Paul and us and cried, saying, These men are the servants of the Most High God, which show unto us the way of salvation. Now listen, this woman, and I've heard it preached this way, and I do not believe it, these, this woman was not making fun of them. Her demon knew who they were. Her demon recognized that this, this was the real deal. How would she possibly give them any kind of credence if she wasn't being influenced? Because she was saying, yeah, these people are them. And the reason why, you know what? <laughs> Those demons recognized them. You, you know what? This morning, the Lord Jesus Christ knows if you're a fake, and the demons know it too. You ever thought about that? Kind of a scary thing when you begin to think about the devils and the demons. They, uh, they, know, they know if you're the real deal, and they know if you're not. Uh, so, uh, he bought, they, the, this demonized woman follows him around, verse 18. And this did she many days, but Paul being grieved in turn and said to the Spirit, not to the woman, to the Spirit, I command thee in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. And he, meaning the demon, came out the same hour. Now, I want you to see how she was influenced and what she was doing and how many demons was it? How many devils? How many spirits? One. That's pretty scary, isn't it? Because how many came out of Legion? 
Oh, it was 2,000, right? Or above 2,000. And so this one woman with one demon was telling fortunes, was hindering the men of God. You know what? They were to scare us. You ever thought that one foul spirit that you bring into this place could hinder other people? I've thought about that a lot. If I come into this and I'm upset and mean I don't have a fight on the way to church, uh, you know what? I bring that to the very house of God. Amen. Now, listen, the lost can be possessed of it, but the redeemed can be influenced by it. And don't think ever for a minute you're exempt from devils just because you're saved. Because a lot of people will teach that. There's no Bible for it, but they'll teach it. Now, it can't, uh, it can't affect your soul because you're sealed to the day of redemption, but it can make you cold and indifferent, and it can make you do things you never would have thought about doing when you're close unto the Lord. That's what demons do. And, and so we find then that, that this, uh, this uh, individual was gone. Now, you can read verse 19 for this week for your private reading, but I want you to know this, they were not excited about it. Uh, the community wasn't going, glory to God, the demon is gone. They were mad. Her owners, the, verse 19 actually refers to them as her owners were upset because they saw that their potential for money was gone. You know what? You get rid of a, of a demon about you, don't expect people to give you a hand clap. Don't expect them to be excited for you because uh, most of them, unless they're truly redeemed, they, uh, they may actually be a little bit upset with the whole situation. So when this woman is done, and sometimes you need to pay as much attention to what your Bible doesn't say to what it does say. Because considering the maniac of Gadara, where do you find him next? Sitting and learning at the feet of Jesus. You know what? This woman is never, ever, ever mentioned again. It's kind of, kind of sobering, isn't it? I mean, I think if she was converted, it would have been mentioned, don't you? I think if she'd stood in the grace of God, she would went out with Paul. You remember the Samaritan woman? She ran. She wanted to follow Jesus. She wanted to beg other people to say, come and see this man that's told me everything ever I did. Come and see him. This woman is never ever mentioned again. High and dry. You know, as, as wonderful it was that the demon was gone, now she's empty. You ever wondered why, how this woman tried to fill that void? Have you ever wondered what this woman did in the silence? Listen, her worldly masters were done with her. They could care less. She didn't have nobody. Didn't have anyone. And so she was left alone. And many times today, uh, I see that in people that go about even in the workplace, and it looks like literally they they have the whole weight of the world resting on their shoulders. And you know what? I think many of them are like that. They're alone. You know what? Even when I'm alone, I'm not. Yeah. You know. Uh, we're going to read something about that in a minute. But some of the best times I've spent speaking to my Lord is just as we need Him. Mm -hmm. And the reason why <laughs> I have good fellowship when I'm alone. But could you imagine not enjoying that? Can you imagine truly just being there by yourself? You know, I've often thought about it. Donna's always been in much better health than me. And I'll probably be out here before she is. But just say for example, just say for an instance that I outlive Donna. And I'm alone 
in that big house all by myself. You know what? If that ever comes, I'm not alone. The Lord would be with me. And see, they, these lost individuals, and once these demons have withdrew themselves, they have no fellowship. They're truly alone. That's what drives. That's what drives people to entertainment today. That's what drives people to countless hours on playing senseless games. That's what drives people to look at TV hour on hour, end on end. Listen, they're feeling something they don't have. Or I'll say this: they're trying to. But listen, you'll never feel it that way. You'll ne you'll never feel satisfied in feeling it. Feeling it with the things of this world. And so we find that this woman, the best we know, died in her sins all alone. Gospel of Luke chapter 22. Luke 22. Luke 22, Luke 22 in the very first verse. Luke 22 in the very first verse. Now the feast of unleavened bread drew nigh, which is called the Passover. And the chief priests and the scribes saw how they might kill, kill him, for they feared the people. Then entered Satan into Judas, surnamed Iscariot. Now, I want you to see that this is probably... Uh, the most tragic scripture you could read. It far, it far exceeds the death of Christ because the death of Christ brought redemption. So as Satan himself, Lucifer, whoever, the, the chief demon, the one that started sin of itself, he entered an individual. And you know why he entered an individual? Because Judas was empty. You know one way Judas tried to fill it? With money. You know what? A lot of people, I, and I'm not going to say your names, but a dear friend, I, I showed Donnie that on the Facebook, but a dear friend of mine, I saw, he, he built him a new house. I mean, I couldn't believe it. it, it I, I'm sure it was probably 5,000 square foot. It was an incredible house. I'm talking about a kid that didn't graduate high school. And you know how he got it? He's one after it, hook, line, and sinker. Everything he's done has been about money. You know what? I hope the gentleman is satisfied. But I bet you next year, if he could build an 8,000 square foot one, he'd go for it. And you know what? We'll never be shouting. There's no, really, there's no satisfaction in that. So even though... <laughs> Judas thought that he was going to get satisfied. He didn't. And, and so the, the, the chief devil, Satan himself, enters into Judas. Now, with that said, uh, you know what? Everybody says, well, Judas must have been a horrible person. No, Judas was just a means to an end. The, the, the devil wanted to come and directly against Christ and he used Judas as his vessel. But you know what? If Satan really wanted something done, you know what? He could use you too. If you're lost, he can fill you anytime he pleases because you're not sealed. And even the redeemed can be influenced. And so then we as the Lord's people ought to take note of what happened to Judas prior to uh, betraying Christ. Verse 4, And he went his way. Now I've often wondered, and, and some of you that have read this more than me can probably tell me, when it said he went his way, does it mean he went Judas' way? Or did he go Satan's way? I personally believe he went Satan's way. He went his way. He was controlled and now fully directed by Satan himself. He went Satan's way. And you know what? Sometimes if we're not very careful, we'll, we'll follow the same stream. And if, if we're not very cognizant of it and very aware of it, we'll be doing the very same things. <laughs> but I want you to see here, he was fully possessed of Satan himself. 
Verse 5, And they, meaning the chief priest, and they were glad. You know what? That's a good time, friends. Eric, the ones you used to drink with, they were glad, wasn't they? Left you high and dry eventually, but they were glad at the time. See, uh, people who are sinners revel in sin, don't they? So when we sin, man, they, they just love it. Dearly, dearly love it. Man, this group was glad. They were happy that Julius was the betrayer. They were happy Satan had entered him. They were happy he was willing to give the blood of Christ. See, uh, that, that's the, and you know, the sad part is Judas thought he was satisfying himself. Judas thought that he was going to be glad when all this thing was over. But he wasn't. Go with me to the Gospel of Matthew now, chapter 27. Matthew 27. Matthew 27 in the first verse. When the morning was come, now this was after, this was probably two days after the event where he had coveted with them. When the morning was come, all the chief priests and elders of the people took counsel against Jesus to put him to death. And when they had bound him, they led him away and delivered him to Pontius Pilate, the governor. Then Judas, which had betrayed him, when he saw that he was con condemned, repented himself. Now, uh, don't ever, anybody ever try to convince you that Judas was saved. Because Judas was lost. He was lost as a goose in a hailstorm. He, in fact, it's, a, it's two things show me for sure that Judas was, uh, was lost. Number one, the Bible says, I think in Matthew chapter 7, he was a devil from the beginning. The other thing is this, is this verse right here. He repented himself. See, godly repentance is totally different than, yeah, than being repentant of yourself. You know what repentance of yourself is? You're just sorry you got caught. That's all, that's all it amounts to. Uh, just embarrassed, just upset, <laughs> and all it makes you want to do is be a little slicker the next time around. That's the level of repentance that Judas had. And you know what? If you're lost, that's all the repentance you'll ever have. That's all the understanding of, of repentance you'll ever know is repenting unto yourself instead of repenting unto God. And it will do you no good. There's no benefit in it. When Judas... Then Judas, which had betrayed him, when he saw that he was condemned, repented himself and brought again uh, and brought again the thirty pieces of silver to the chief priests and elders, saying, "I have sinned, and that I have betrayed the innocent blood." And they said to him, "And they said, What is that to us? See thou to it." Now, I want you to also see this. Judas understood who Christ was. And that doesn't mean he knew Him. He knew about Him. So you know what? That's a very, that's a very disconcerting thing. We live in the South. There's not one person you can hardly find that don't name, know the name of Jesus. Yeah. But that does not make them saved. Right. Yeah. And He did know I've done this. But there was no repentance. You know, you know what it says in Romans chapter 9? That Esau sought repentance and never found it. It says, though he sought it with bitter tears. You know what? Then repentance is a gift. You don't have to get it. You're not entitled to it. It is a gift that comes from God. And we should view it just that way. We should see how precious and wonderful it is that, that we can gain repentance as a gift of the Lord Jesus Christ and Him alone. Verse 5, And He cast down the pieces of silver in the temple and departed and went and hanged Himself. You know what? 
Satan had left him. Right. Left him high and dry. Mm-hmm. The money meant nothing. Threw it at the feet of the elders. Went out and killed himself. That's where Satan will leave you too. Mm-hmm. He'll leave you high and dry. When he's accomplished his purpose to you, he just said you'd be dead as living. And so he, so, so Judas goes ahead and kills himself saying, you know what, I really believe in the modern day. And, and I've seen the statistics, especially when I was teaching school, that we, listen, we are at an all-time critical high of young people taking their own lives. I mean, just unbelievable, starting like at 13. You know, I think what could be so tragic to a 13-year-old boy that he'd take his own life? And then I think, you know what? Probably demon possessed. And then the Spirit withdraws himself. And they're alone. They're alone. And you know what? If you were left that alone too, you might just try it. See, that's the thing. That's the thing. That's the difference between a believer and a redeemed person. Because remember, the, re- the redeemed is never alone. When Elijah was out of the will of God and he went up into the mountains, and, and the Lord God came to him and said, uh, What doest thou here, Elijah? At least he had the rebuke of God. You know what? I don't want to be rebuked of God, but blessed be the name of the Lord because. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> if you be without chastisement, then are you bastards and not sons. Amen. And see, Elijah found out, didn't he? You know what? I bet the trip back was a lot quicker than the trip going. <laughs> Jonas was, wasn't he? <laughs> said he made a three days journey in one. <laughs> so he, he wanted to run back to the real God. And so then we find that the devil and devils will leave us high and dry, will leave us lifeless, will leave us with no no direction whatsoever, will destroy us as a spiritual being any time that they possibly can. That's their nature. Now, I want you to go with me to Acts 23. Acts 23. And verse 10. Acts 23 and verse 10. The Bible says this, And there arose a great dissension, the chief, uh, the chief captain fearing Paul should be pulled into pieces of them. Now, let me warn you about this. Now, this dissension uh, worked to Paul's preserving. But anytime there's a dissension among God's people, watch out because the devil is somewhere. Anytime there's disagreement, anytime there's a foul spirit, anytime there's a, you know what, we used to have a little banging rooster up at the house. I don't know what happened to him. And, uh, I mean, he was cock of the walk until the big rooster got around. Watch people like that. When, there, when there's dissension, watch it. Watch dissension among God's people. And so we see then as the Lord's people, we need to be very, very careful because this was indicative of something else. And so they noticed that in the end of that verse it says, and commanded the soldiers to go down and to take him by force from among them and to bring him into the castle. So God brought safety by His mighty hand. Verse 11, And the night following, the Lord stood by him. Now, I want you to see this. And I pointed this out to you time and time again. It was the night following. It wasn't the night that he got arrested. It was the next night. So that means about 36 hours. He was all alone. At least how men think of it. But you know what? By himself, but not alone. (laughs) You know what? When I'm by myself, but not alone... (laughs) I begin to think of home. And that's what we ought to do as God's people. And if you you know what? If you have to crank up the music when you're by yourself, something is wrong. If you have to do this to keep from being idle, something is wrong. 
How close are you to the Lord this morning? I mean, really. Listen, we need to we need to quit playing church and begin to honor the very God of the Bible. We need to praise Him and lift Him up, not only this day, but every day that we live. And you know what? Not worry about what everybody else thinks about us. Just praise Him for who He is. We need to understand and know that we're never, ever alone. Unless you're lost. Now, if you're lost, one time, one day your good time buddies will be gone. Satan will be through with you. And yeah, you're going to be alone. And probably end up like Jesus. Very sad thing. You know what? I think about drug addicts a whole lot. And um, I get frustrated sometimes. And I won't say who it is, but everybody knows who I'm talking about. I get so frustrated at her. But you know what? She's alone. It's really it. And, and I should have a bit of compassion, really. Yeah. Uh, I, I should, you know, when I get so frustrated, play that the Lord might, might fill her. You know, that, that's why He said, and they were filled with the Holy Ghost. They didn't have to be empty no more. You know, the Jews were very, very religious people, but they were empty. You know what? We, we ought to desire to be filled. You're not alone. Unless you're lost. And if you're lost, there's a void there that no other thing can fill. Do you know the Lord Jesus Christ? 